we go into today's discussion, uh, let's talk about a special website called tabletop.events. Uh, they're having a special convention at the end of May, uh, the last weekend of May, called the Con of Champions. And if you like virtual conventions or if you just want to support this site, I recommend highly that you do so. Uh, this site is very important for both game masters, players, and convention organizers. Well, I would just like to say that not only are they holding a con at the end of the month, but this is the con that will save them, or not. Uh, with the current plague and all the cons canceling, a uh, tabletop event last month announced that they were going bankrupt. Um, but then there was an outcry from gamers and they're holding this con to try to raise enough money to save them until the crisis is over. So hmm. come to the con at the end of the month and help them make their uh, save versus death. Since we're talking about conventions, uh, today's topic is about how to run a game at a convention. It's such a different beast than you're you know, playing at home. Um, now, Matt, I know you've, had, you've, you've ran games at conventions. You've done it for, yep. for a long time now. Um, I, I felt this would be a good topic to talk about because I personally, I wasn't sure myself how to want to run a game at a convention. Um, so, uh, yeah, what, what are your thoughts? What, are your, what, would, what advice would you give us? Well, you're certainly right. It is definitely a uh, different kind of gaming experience than uh, gaming with your friends. Um, you're running a one-shot game and you've got uh, a limited time to run it in, usually about four hours. So my first piece of advice is to bring your best game to the table. I don't want to, um, I don't want to stress anybody out or make you nervous, but your players have paid money to be here. <laughs> they are, they've actually paid money to come to the con. They paid money to go to the, to rent the hotel room. It's important you know, to take it seriously. Yes. Take it seriously. Bring your best game to the table and make it worthwhile for these people. So the first thing you can do is you want to be prepared, you want to be punctual, and you want to be polite. Um, are you prepared? I mean you obviously you want you want your adventure ready to go, whether you whether you wrote it yourself or you're using a module. You want to make sure you know it backwards and forwards. You want to make sure you understand you know, the rules that you need, and not only that you understand them, but you can explain them to people that you need to explain them to. You want to make sure that you bring everything you need to the table. I put together a GMing kit for myself. This is okay. a, um, yes, you can buy these so fishing tackle sort of boxes or craft supplies. And in here, I have... I have dice, pens, I have counters. So that way you want, you want to have extra dice in case someone forgets their dice. You want to have pens um, in case someone forget their pens. You want to have writing implements. Just want to have everything you need at the table. And then you can drop it on how, the how, floor. <laughs> <laughs> how would you describe that? For those that, that are watching this video, um, uh, how would you describe what you just showed? Uh, oh, right. Uh, well, it's a um, it's a plastic box um, with different compartments in it. Uh, they make them for different things. They make them for fishing tackle. They make them for um, for here. There's, here's a small one here. This is a screw set. This, you can, if you buy some screws, um, if you go to a craft store, you can you can buy them um for crafters to put uh threads and things in and you buy the empty box it's you know seven ten dollars um they often have little movable compartments so you can make the compartments as big or small if you want them to and then you just fill it with everything you need you fill it with dice and pens and counters and whatever your type of game uses and then when you're ready for a game you just grab that head down to the table so it's a good way to be prepared and carry everything you need. So aside from being prepared, you want to be punctual. Um, your game will have a, a, a starting time and you want to be there before the starting time so you have enough time to set up so you're ready when people show up. It's also a good way to let people find you. and they'll, they'll come into a room, 
there'll be a whole bunch of tables. You're at one of them. So you can, you can set up your GM screen or something so they can see, they can see, you know, they might be able yep. to see the name of the game on the GM screen and say, hey, I'm running this game over here. Also, if you show up um, early, you might be able to get the best table in the room. <laughs> uh, so I would suggest showing up at least 15 minutes early. I'm a little anal retentive like that. I show up half an hour, 45 minutes early, but that's just me. If you don't have psychological problems, then you can just show up 15 minutes. That's good. <laughs> uh, how, 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 do you, how do you handle players that come in late? Uh, I, know, I know sometimes uh, those that, you know, maybe they, uh, their last session ran too long or maybe they were stuck somewhere and then they sure. come in like five to 10 minutes late uh, or maybe even longer. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you handle that situation? Well, uh, that, is the, that was the third thing. Uh, you want to be prepared, punctual, and polite. So um, the best thing you want to do is just take it in stride. Um, as you said, maybe their last game run, ran long. There's all sorts of reasons um, that someone might be late. The first thing that I like to do is if my table isn't full, because you'll have a list of who's going to be at your game, if everybody's not there, I give them five to 10 minutes uh, before we start. And everybody at the table is usually okay with that. I mean, it's, it's kind of a standard thing. You say, well, people are not here. We're going to give them some extra time. But then, of course, um, after five or 10 minutes, then you want to start because you also want to be polite to the people who have showed up on time. What you want to do is, um, if you can, you want to try to write the adventure to accommodate this. Um, so if someone shows up 15, 20 minutes late, you can say, well, okay, thanks for coming. Here's your character. And then you can say, well, then, you know, the elf shows up. <laughs> you know, it depends on the type of story you're, you're wanting to run. I mean, I, sometimes you'll get lucky. I ran a game at a con where the characters went off to, you know, they left headquarters and they went to point A and they had a bit of an adventure. Then they came back to headquarters just as the late player showed, showed up. So I said, you come back to headquarters and look. Your companion is there waiting for you. So uh, just try to um, fit them in as smoothly and quickly as you want to. Um, you know, no, um, no recriminations or, or arguments about their being late. Just kind of slip them into the game and keep going. Everybody there is, um, has come to play. And so they won't mind even if you kind of shoehorn them in a, in, a, in a way that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. That's okay. Just kind of get them in there and keep moving forward. Okay. So, yeah. When it comes to uh, writing the game, the type of game you want at a con, you want to keep it short and sweet. And by short, like I said, you, only, you probably only have four hours or so. So you don't want your game to be too complex, even if it's a mystery game. You don't want the characters to be too stumped by it. You don't want there to be a lot of setup to the game. You want to be able to just quickly tell them what they need and then just jump right into the action. You want to keep a close eye on the pacing. Uh, you don't want things to get bogged down. Although, as long as everybody's having fun, that's good enough. <laughs> um, hmm. You know, if people are getting bogged down trying to figure out a puzzle, but if everybody at the game, if everybody at the table is enjoying it, then maybe you can just let them go with it. If only half the table's enjoying it, the other half is itching to get on with it, then you might want to kind of speed things up a little bit and kind of give them the answer or suddenly make the answer they're working on the right one or have a belligerent dwarf kicked on the door and attack everybody. You know, you want to keep an eye on the pacing. Um, one thing that I found that really helps with a, this sort of single session con game is to try to make your adventure module. By that, I mean that you have separate little encounters and you can add or remove them um, depending on how much time you have. So if the characters start the tavern and they go down the road and they're going to get to the evil temple. So uh, you look, always look at the clock. You're always looking at the clock. If the game's going too quickly, and uh, they didn't spend enough time, in, as much time as you thought in the tavern, you say, oh my goodness, they're gonna, they're gonna just run through this too quickly. You've got an adventure with some bandits on the road and you can just throw that in and play through that and then stretch out the game a little bit. Conversely, 
if they're taking a really long time, if they followed a false lead and they spent the first hour and a half at the tavern and you're thinking, oh my God, they're never going to get there in time. Suddenly there are no bandits and they get straight to the temple and you can get right onto that part of the adventure. So you can just kind of add or remove parts as you like. You mentioned before about um, that you don't want the game to be bogged down. What do you do when you have new players that have never played the rule system or maybe even are familiar with role playing in general? Ah, well, okay. So the first thing you can do is when you set up your game through tabletop, <laughs> um, you can specify the level of experience that you want at your table. So you can say, this is the game for new but newbies. And some you don't even know what role playing is. Come and sit down and we'll work it out. On the other end, you can say, this is a game for experienced players only. Maybe a high level game where we don't want to talk about the rules and we're just going to we're just going to jump right into the deep end. Now, that's what you're requesting. What you get, I mean, there's no enforcement. <laughs> so you could still get a newbie at a, um, at a table f uh, that you, you know, for um, experienced players. And there's nothing really we can do about that. You don't want to turn anybody away. Um, so the best scenario is to sit them next to somebody who knows the game who can explain it to them. And that actually happens a lot. You'll find that um, a lot of people at these conventions are experienced players. Most of them are experienced players. And um, you'll usually find at least one or two people at your table who are perfectly willing and happy to show somebody else the rules. So if you've got a game uh, where you, weren't expecting to explain the rules. Um, you can sit the newbie next to an experienced player and the experienced player will help them through the game. Um, a lot of players are at the table to play the game, not really to learn the rule system. One of the things uh, I was gonna mention is you can simplify the rule system for the one scenario you're on. So you don't have to use all the fiddly little bits. You don't have to use, you know, if the system calls for, you know, four rolls for combat, you can kind of simplify that down. Maybe you can cut it down to maybe two rolls. Maybe you can, you know, maybe you can use a, a static initiative instead of having everybody roll for initiative. Just take everybody's base dexterity or whatever and say, that's your initiative. Things that would have larger repercussions in longer games, you can get away with because the game's only gonna last for four hours. Um, if you haven't got a uh, experienced player who wants to help your uh, newbie along, you'll just have to um, kind of explain it to them as they go along and you'll have to try to strike a balance between helping them enjoy the game and slowing it down um, for the other players. Uh, you might want to, I mean, for, for instance, you might end up just telling them what to roll instead of explaining them rules. You say, okay, at this point, you want to roll a 20-sided die and add in your, your strength bonus and then compare it to this number. Uh, you're just helping them enjoy the game. This really isn't, the, isn't really the place to learn the rules. Unless, of course, you said you were going to run a game for noobs where you were going to explain the rules. So anyway, yeah, that, that's, how, that's how you would handle new people at the table. Um, how do you handle, oh, sorry, one, one more question. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, um, go ahead, guys. How, how, how do you decide the number, how do you decide the number of people to, uh, to uh, have in your, your, your adventure? Um, like one is, how much is too much, how much is too little? Okay, well, there's a couple of things there. Um, a lot of it is personal taste you know, how many people you feel comfortable with. The organizers of the event want as many people as possible to be able to play their games. So I would say that to help everybody out, um, try to run the game with as many slots, with as many players as you feel comfortable with. And that really depends, depends on you. Um, uh, most people, most GMs I know run, you know, four to five um and it's it's different for the type of game right if i'm running a very intense character driven story i only want three people 
because it's a lot to keep track of all their stories. Um, although I don't usually run those sort of games at cons. Cons games are usually a little more action oriented. Um, so in an action oriented game, I can usually handle up to five people. But uh, sometimes the game dictates that. I run paranoia all the time at conventions. A full troubleshooter team is six players. So I run six players. The other thing is that, um, you know, people at cons are excited to play games and I have a hard time turning people away. So I always bring more characters than I, um, I have seats for. So if I say I'm running a game for five people, I'll make seven or eight characters. Uh, I've run a paranoia game with eight people just because people kept showing up and said, oh boy, I really want to play. Well, that's exciting when people want to play in your game. So, uh, so the answer is as many as you feel comfortable with. <laughs> as many <laughs> as you think you can handle. Um, but um, don't, don't, get, don't have more people in that you, than you think you can handle. And by handle, I mean that you can keep everybody engaged. Um, it's not a lot of fun to show up to a game uh, and there are 10 people in the game and it takes, uh, it takes 10 minutes every combat turn for a get around to you so you can make one roll. <laughs> um, you know, that, that can be a little off-putting to characters. So, I mean, to players. Okay. So, as many as you feel comfortable with. Aside from wanting your game to be short, uh, you want your game to be sweet, short and sweet. And what, what I mean by sweet is it's, it's got to be fun. Uh, and I, I know that sounds obvious, but it's got to be fun right now. <laughs> um, a lot of times in your, uh, in your longer form games with your friends, you'll have buildup. You'll have, you'll, sometimes you'll have entire sessions which are just kind of planning for the next session. Uh, which which can be fun, and you can have, and the pay up, payoff is really good. But the thing to remember here is you've only got four hours, so you don't really have a lot, you don't have enough time to set something up to be fun later. You want it to be fun right now. I think the ways you can do that, like I said earlier, simplify the rules, that helps. Um, and you want to make sure that each scene is fun for ideally for everybody. Um, and one of the ways you can do that, and a really important part is um, pre-generated characters. Most convention games are gonna use pre-generated characters, unless your character gen is short and fun. Right? So then you can make the characters at the table, but only if it's gonna take you know, 15, 20 minutes at the most, because otherwise it's cutting into your game time. So you'll want to bring pre-generated characters for them. This is terribly important. You want to make sure that the pre-generated, I'm sorry, that the pre-generated characters are fun. And by that, you want them to be useful. You want them to fit the scenario. I have been appalled at how many times, well, not a lot, but too many. <laughs> uh, I've been in games where some of the pre-generated characters don't fit the scenario. Um, you know, my brother was given, my brother loves the magic user. So my brother was given a magic user and um, none of his spells were useful in the scenario. And so he spent most of the game struggling to find ways to use his sort of diplomatic spells in a dungeon crawl. And well, that's, it was, that's, that's yeah. terrible. And, well, yes, it was very, very frustrating for him. And that is completely the dungeon master's fault because it's the game master who designs the scenario and it's the game master who designs the characters. You know, at, in a long form game with your friends, your, character, your, your players make their own characters. And if they don't fit the scenario, well, sometimes they just don't fit and they have to struggle through. But next scenario, it's going to be all about them. But you don't have a next scenario. You've only got four hours for a one-shot scenario. So every character has got to be useful somehow. You know, it's, um, it's your fault if you give them useful, useless skills. 
The other thing is um, a lot of times characters will have backstories. Um, and sometimes they have too much backstory. You only want to give them enough backstory, um, just enough that they need. You know, um, sometimes, you know, obviously if you're running a Call of Cthulhu or something, who these characters are might be very important. Uh, their backstories might be tied to the plot, but you only want to give them just enough uh, backstory to fit. And there's about two reasons you want to do this. One, characters, uh, players at the con only can choose from your characters. Uh, and so they have a limited choice. So you want to make sure that the characters you present them with are not too challenging. Um, you're very likely, you don't get a lot of professional actors <laughs> at, at gaming conventions. So you don't want to present them with a character who's, you know, a, um, uh, you know, a deaf, mute, uh, uh, you know, war veteran fighting a, uh, your drug addiction. That, might, that could be, <laughs> that could be a fantastic character if I came up with myself or I feel like I could do this, but a lot of players won't be, won't, won't know what to do with that. And they'll struggle to role play that character and they won't have fun. So give them just enough background. The other reason you don't want to do that, you don't want to fill out everything, is you want to give them a little bit of space to make this character their own, to tailor it. So if you leave some blank spaces for the player to fill in, even though they're playing a pre-generated character, it feels like they've added a little something. They can say, oh yeah, well my characters, you know, he grew up poor and he's kind of like this. Great, fantastic. If that doesn't throw off your plot, let him go with it. Uh, so you want to leave them some blanks to fill in. Um, along the same lines, I try to design my characters to be uh, gender neutral. Um, as long as the plot doesn't require that this character be a man or a woman, for whatever reason, then I try to design the character so that it doesn't matter. I, I don't put a gender on the character. If I pick a name, I try to pick a gender neutral name so that whoever the player is, they can decide how to play the character. So I think hmm. uh, if you do that, you can make your game short and sweet and everybody at the table has a good time. If I were to summarize everything that you said, it's like, was, you know, like you said, like a lot of, uh, you, have, you have to know your materials. You Definitely. Know, um, you have to um, know that uh, this is a, you're going to be playing with a bunch of strangers that may not want really complicated characters, just want to go there straight to play. And if they're new players, see if the rest of the team can help them out with it as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, that sounds like great advice. Um, so what do you think? Are you going to run a con game for us? <laughs> uh, one day, one okay. day. Uh, right. well, if I could we'll have to wait break through. <laughs> you know, I, I think once I break my uh, shyness a little bit, you know, once I get, get over that a little bit, then maybe I'll, I'll share some adventures with some strangers. Well, um, that's a good point. These are all strangers. It does, there is a little bit of hurdle to get over, you know, playing with strangers instead of your friends. But the thing to remember is that most of these people are great. They're, they're other gamers. They're there to game. They want to have fun with you. So um, if, you can, if you can take the plunge, it's like diving in the cold water. If you can just take the plunge and do it, you'll have a great time. Hmm. And once you start going to more and more of these cons, they stop to be strangers. They cease being strangers. My brother and I have been going to the cons around here in New England, making the little circuit every year. We've got about uh, six cons that we go to. And we just see the same people over and over again. Now they become friends. Well, th thank you so much for sharing your advice. Um, um, uh, for those watching the video version of this, let us know what you think um, <laughs> in the comments sure. below. Let, if, if you have any advice for, for players or uh, game masters that are going to try this out, or, or if you've done it before and you have something to share, please let us know. Um, so yes, if you want to see more of our stuff, it's really dicey. Uh, just go ahead and Google it. Uh, if you hit, if you type in reallydicey.com, you go straight to our YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you soon.